The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. The mind of Pat Popolizio is a wondrous thing. And for you pack wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pack Mentality Poppins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. It's rivalry week here on Tobacco Road as NC State will head to North Carolina for a huge ACC duel this weekend. That preview and much more in this brand new episode of the Pack Mentality Poppins Podcast. I'm your host, NC State Director of Digital Communications, Brian Reinhardt, and I'm joined by the head coach of the Wolfpack, Pat Pavlizio. Good afternoon, Brian. Good to have you back. Pat, no way to sugarcoat this. This is our second season doing the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast, and for the first time over the last two seasons, we have to talk about an ACC loss. Last time out, the Wolfpack won five of the first six bouts, but Pitt won the final four and came away with an 18-16 win in Reynolds Coliseum. Both teams won five bouts, but the Panthers posted three bonus point wins to the Pack's one. Your thoughts on the duel? Uh, yeah, always disappointed when you you don't leave with a W. But I think there was uh, a lot of lot to reflect on and grow from. Uh, Pittsburgh obviously wrestled a great duel, uh, had some big wins in there, and you know that was the difference. We we went came out won four of the first five, and then just were were a little flat after that. And uh, that break, you know, we didn't close out. All we needed was one more win, really, in those last four matches and weren't able to get that. So that was disappointing. But, you know, I think we want to learn from the mistakes that we made earlier than later. And that's kind of what our focus has been on uh, this week and uh, still piecing together some things and, and, you know, missing a few key guys. But we expect whoever we throw out there to go out and compete hard, and, and some of the guys did and some didn't. But either way, you know, we we will grow and get better from the experiences that we had in that dual meet. You haven't had to go into that home locker room very often and talk to the team after a loss. What did you tell the guys after, and how did the guys respond in practice this week? We talked a lot about, you know, where – we started and where we're at as a program right now, I think that's something that, you know, this year's team is different. It's young. Uh, we had a lot of underclassmen wrestling in that dual meet, and we got to create our identity, and we keep talking about that. We talked a lot about, you know, the guys in the past, what type of attitude they brought out on the mat and that little chip and fire. Um, it was missing, and uh, we've addressed it, and I think there's been a lot of good leadership from guys on this team and the pride that, you know, that they want to instill and, and leave their legacy right now. And some guys, you know, we recruited them to come here and elevate our program to the next level, not just keep us where we're at. And that's kind of what we addressed and talked about. And uh, I think we're going to see some, some, some more fight from these individuals because it, it, uh, it was a little bit of lack of fight out there with, with not everybody, but some guys. And they, they've taken ownership from it, and uh, we're going to grow and get better. And despite that loss, NC State still controls its own destiny when it comes to the dual title. The pack closes out the regular season with trips to North Carolina and Virginia Tech. Now, UNC sits at 3-0, and but Virginia Tech also suffered a loss last weekend, and Pitt has two on the season. So if the Wolfpack wins out, it doesn't matter what these other schools do. NC State can still repeat as regular season champs. Pat, with a loss, a little more sense of urgency, but the guys knew how the schedule was going to play out, and they really have to be ready to go with these final two road contests. Absolutely, and uh, that's something we talked about uh, today was the challenges that lie ahead. How do you respond? Because it is. It's going to be a tough challenge. Two really good teams we get to compete against and uh, you know, two of the better teams we've obviously seen this year. So we got to be ready, and uh, I, I want to see how our guys respond. Backs against the wall. Do we come out firing, or are we going to – compete hard or are we going to take a back seat and that's what it's going to come down to and that's what we're going to see what we're made of and uh this is what we recruited a lot of these guys to come here and and show us this kind of attitude and mentality and i'm excited to see how we respond because uh friday is going to dictate and say a lot for the the closure of our season the duel is over at carolina on friday night how does that work it's a road trip but you guys aren't going the day before with classes weigh-ins workouts how is a friday structured with a short road trip over to north carolina 
Yeah, we, we treat it the same amount of time um, as we would here for a home duel. It's the same kind of routine. Obviously, we're, we're traveling down the road to go compete there. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many schools in the country have the same situation like we do where we got two two schools that are this close. Um, so we can. We can do everything we need to do as a normal day other than just instead of showing up in our wrestling room to come to practice before a, a duel, we're, we're driving down 30 minutes uh hopefully avoiding some Friday traffic. And you'll still get there five hours early, which I always appreciate. Yeah, you need to. you got to be ready in case, you know, you get a you know, little adversity in the car. Maybe something goes, you know, yeah. the heat's not working, the AC's not working. The SID kind of likes to roll in. Yeah, maybe you need a cup of coffee to keep you fresh because lately you've been dragging. <laughs> but before we look ahead to this weekend's action over at UNC, we wanted to catch up uh, – our fans on a very exciting recent announcement. A few weeks ago, it was announced Reynolds Coliseum will host the 2019 World Team Trials in May. And tickets just went on sale last week, and I checked with the ticket office this morning, and all of the VIP and the reserve sections have already been sold out. So only general admission tickets are left for the sessions and single sessions. But Pat, you have got to be happy to see tickets being sold already for this prestigious event. What has the feedback been from the wrestling community about Reynolds getting this bid? Yeah, those VIP tickets went fast. Uh, I think within 24 hours we sold those out. So I I believe we're, we're going to continue to sell these tickets. Uh, we're going to have a great crowd. There's obviously a, a lot to look forward to hosting it here in Raleigh, right in, in Reynolds. Um so, you know, I imagine we're going to have a packed house, but there's going to be so many different activities going on. It's not just your typical event where you show up, watch wrestling, and then, you know, you go back and whatever. There's going to be things to do outside of wrestling in between the sessions and, and at night, some really good places to eat. And I know the city's working hard to uh, join us and, and make this a first-class event. Intern Will's really working, too, on that stuff, isn't he? Intern Will has been phenomenal. Um, we just got to make sure SAD is getting all this information out there as well. Well, for fans interested in securing their tickets to the World Team Trials, just visit gopack.com slash buy tickets. And once again, it's going to be a great event in May. But on to the main event for this podcast. It's rivalry week as the Wolfpack will make the short drive over to Chapel Hill and face North Carolina this Friday night at 630. Of course, we would love to take over their arena and see a, a red of white fans cheering on the Wolfpack. But if you cannot make the duel, it's going to be streamed on ACC Network Extra. And of course, we're going to be providing live updates on Twitter at Pack Wrestling. Pat, UNC is coming in with a lot of momentum right now. They have won four straight duels and so top the ACC standings with a 3-0 and record thus far. The battles are always close and the Wolfpack has won the last five matchups in this series. So... This year's battle is really shaping up to be a true road challenge for the Wolfpack this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, their, their whole staff over there has done a phenomenal job elevating their program, and those guys have momentum right now. They've uh, won some big duels the last couple weeks. So it's one of those. we got to be ready to compete, and I, I like where we're at as far as coming off of – a match last week and, and getting tested and, and guys are, you know, obviously not happy with where they're at. So we're going to see, we're going to see some excitement, some energy from, from our group and know that we're going to be in a, in a hard fought duel over there. And it's one of those, you know, we gotta, we gotta come ready to wrestle because we know every single match is going to be a, a fight in seven minutes of hard wrestle. I mentioned this is a rivalry between these two tobacco road schools. You grew up in New York and went to Oklahoma State, but you've been in Raleigh long enough to understand what our fans think of the NC State versus UNC matchups and not just wrestling, but overall in sports here between these two schools. What do you think of this rivalry in college athletics? I think it's good. I think, you know, that's what makes things exciting. People obviously coming out and supporting. And a lot of times in, in matches like this, you, you get results that you would never see before because of the, the rivalries um, that goes on. You know, wrestling in college, you, you saw a lot between uh, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma, that bedlam duel. There were some crazy things that went on. And as time goes on, you know, I know this is going to be one of those duels that's going to be a lot like that with the history that they have and and, st and where we're at as a program right now. Those are going to be the kind of duels that you want to be a part of. And, and you should, as an athlete, always look forward to those kind of competitions because they're the ones that are going to stand out most, you know, when your career is over and, you, and you're like, hey, we got to wrestle in a lot of good duels. But the ones I remember the most are usually the ones that are the most heated rivalries. 
Now we're taping this episode before the second set of coaches panel rankings have come out, but just an estimated guess here. These two teams are going to be well represented and secure the ACC as many as 16 to 18 NCAA allocations. Just a very impressive stats. A lot of potential for some ranked versus ranked matchups here. And I would say the highlight match would be at 149, pair of top 10 wrestlers. NC State's grad transfer, Justin Oliver, going up against redshirt freshman Austin O'Connor. And Justin has scored back-to-back major decisions here in ACC action, while O'Connor has a major and a pin in his 3-0 and in conference duels. You talked about getting Justin ready for these top matchups at the end of the season. What a test this is going to be. This is going to be a true test. You know, O'Connor's wrestled really well all year. Uh, you know, being a freshman and, and wrestling like he is shows how good he is. Uh, so it's one we got to look forward to this matchup. We, we got to go out and be aggressive and use our experience being a fifth year college wrestler versus, uh, you know, a guy that's finishing his first year, but a, a really good kid. So, you know, that's something we're going to have to use to our advantage and know that this kid wrestles really hard for seven minutes and uh, it's got a lot of good offense. So I'm looking forward to seeing where we're at and finally getting close to, to being 100% healthy again at 49 and, and seeing him wrestle and, and finish out the next couple of weeks because the ACC at 149 is, is very competitive. Now, something happened in Justin's last match. You just don't see too much. A guy gave up a four-point near fall, but still came back and got the major, as Justin did. So third period, pit started on top, and the guy made a very nice move and put Justin on his back very close to a pin, but Justin fought it off and eventually reversed it and picked up that bonus point. I've asked you before about working in practice with guys on top trying to get returns, but on the other end of that, how much do you guys work on positions like that, like not to give up pins, and is it just instinct and to get battle out of it? Yeah, you're uh, one of those where you really hope you're not drilling that move quite a bit, bridging off your back. I think that's a, it's a little bit of instinct there. But yeah, you know, every now and then you'll, you'll put guys in tough situations in practice. And I think that's just more of growing up around wrestling and knowing, you know, that fear of being on your back. You got to fight like, like no other to get off. And he did that. Um, and it was a kid had him pretty tight, locked that up. Um, and Justin did. He got off his back and just kept wrestling, kept his composure and didn't let anything affect the situation and, and ended up scoring the major for us. Another ranked battle up at 184. Nick Renan faces returning All-American Chip Ness. Uh, Nick had a disappointing loss against Pitt last time out, and Ness recently lo- also lost to Bonacarsi in their dual matchup from Pitt. So it great way to get some momentum back here with a win against a ranked foe. Yeah, I think both guys are looking for that. Uh, Nick obviously is very disappointed with his performance, um, and I, I'm I'm confident and positive he's going to go out and compete on Friday because he knows our team needs him to step up big time and he's uh he's made some statements to the team this this week and uh very positive good leadership and I'm looking forward to seeing him compete because when he's wrestling at his best he's very dangerous and obviously if he's not competing out there it's, it's hard for him to put up points and there was a couple of factors uh that were probably an issue last Sunday and one of them we cleared up and one of them we're just going to have to deal with and go out and compete the best we can. And that's what you're going to see from Nick Arena being a true warrior for a team right now. And uh, he still has the ability to wrestle really hard for seven minutes. And, and we're looking forward to Friday, him doing that and, and really stepping up for this team. Hey, this is Jason Bryan of Matt Talk Podcast Network. And we interrupt this program to inform you and make things awesome. That is why jumping in on Brian and the Skips interview to tell you a little bit about a deal We've got for you Wolfpack Wrestling fans, it is something I've put together for the past five or six years. It is the Division One Digital Preview Guide. This thing, we call it The Guide. It is like 200 pages of absolute knowledge, information, stats, facts, statistics. You name it, it is in the guide. Go to WrestlingPreviewGuide.com and enter the promo code PACK. And you will save $5 off this digitally delivered product. So it's mo- it, it's pretty much set to go for your iPad, your tablet, your smartphone. You sit there, you pull it up. When it goes on sale, it's a pre-sale now. It'll be available March 13th. So you get it, you download it, you'll sit there, and you'll be right there flipping through for whether it be your fantasy contest, whether it be your your pick em brackets, or you're just sitting there in the stands, or you're watching from home, thumbing through, whether it be on your computer, your phone, your tablet, uh, iPad, whatever. You flip through and be like, oh, I wonder how many times... Hayden Hydley's wrestled this guy this year. Boom, boom, boom. You flip right to it, scroll right to it, span it. Boom. You've got it. Everything you need to know, social media links, all sorts of stuff, wrestlingpreviewguide.com. Use promo code PAC, P-A-C-K. Of course, you're listening to Pac Patelli Poppins Podcast. You know how to spell PAC. 
hashtag pack mentality. So use the promo code pack and uh, just let you know, I'm curious on who's going to win because uh, I know that Brian has made some points talking about other schools within the podcast world that have shows. They also have promo codes too. I'm curious which fan base is the most voracious when it comes to consuming educational content. Is it my friends down in Raleigh? Hmm, let's find out. So that being said, wrestlingpreviewguide.com, offer code PAC, save five bucks. This thing is retails for $19.99. You get it for $14.99. It will just change the way you consume your content with the NCAA championships. I stand by it. It is one of the great things that I, I really just, I talk about how great it is because I actually know, I look at it from as a fan. I'm like, what do I want to see? What do I want to be able to have quick access to? It's the stuff that I use for when I'm PA announcing at the national championships. It's the stuff that ESPN actually pays me to print them up to go, hey, here is for your Matt side broadcast. Here's what we've got in the production truck. You notice why there's a lot less mistakes on the broadcasts as of late? I'm going to take a little bit of credit for that. So you can take credit for uh, that great knowledge and, and impress your friends. Again, WrestlingPreviewGuide.com. And Brian doesn't know how long this promo is going to last because I'm interrupting his show. But uh, now, more with Brian and Pat. I thought a good way to end this week's podcast is to honor those that are in their final season here at NC State. Uh, the last duel against Pitt also served as senior day. NC State honored eight members of the program that are wrapping up their final season. Pat, I thought it would be a good idea for me to run down a list of guys and get you to speak about their contributions during their time in the program. We're going to start with a local product. Will Clark came to NC State from Cary, majoring in business administration with a marketing concentration. Yeah, Will's been a great contributor to a program. Being right here, a local guy, you know, he's he's brought in a lot of local people to come watch and, and support our program and comes from a great family that's helped us in any event that we've ever wanted. And, you know, Will's one of those guys who's got a great personality, always upbeat, and uh, glad he's been a part of our program because he's, he's helped us in a lot of different ways, not just wrestling. And, you know, he's going to leave here with his degree and has done – a really good job academically for us. So we're very thankful for everything he's done. Tyler Johnson from Lockport, Illinois, at major in sports management. Yeah, Tyler, you know, he's one that's probably hasn't had the best luck when it comes to uh, injuries. And I think that's one of the things that defines him is he's found a way to do whatever he needs to do to help our team get better. Um, one, when he's healthy, he's in there every day pushing our guys and, you know, recently just, Season ended with another surgery, so uh, he's had a positive attitude for his situation. He's had one of the the best attitudes you possibly can have, and a great kid to have with our program, coming from a from a very good family as well. And his brother Lee came through your program and continues to train at the Wolfpack's RTC. Roderick Davis is from Georgia and majoring in accounting. Yep, the Davis family has been big big supporters of us, and Lee being around here. Staying post college, you know, that's helped motivate Rod and, and Rod's, you, you see him this year, you know, he's been a great utility guy for us and more than anything in that room every day shows up battles and, and it hasn't been an easy road for him because there's been a lot of ups and downs with injuries as well. Um, you know, that's the thing you don't see every day. These guys, what they're dealing with. And, and that's another guy that's overcome a lot of adversity and has helped our upper weights train and has been big impact as well. Sam Malikian, he's been a glue guy for you. He, he's wrestled in four different weight classes during his time, but like you from New York, majoring in paper science and engineering. Yeah, uh, Mr. Personality, probably a comedian. Um, Sam has, I think you, you hit it on the head. If you've got a guy that will wrestle four different weight classes, that tells you what kind of team player he is, and he's been extremely valuable. Actually, he's one of our captains this year, and that tells you how much respect the guys on our team have. Um, but there's not a day he doesn't come here, show up, give it 110% and leads by example, engineer major. So it's, it's not an easy thing for him to go through and he's matured tremendously and expect some big things for him down the road in his professional career. Um, hopefully one day we'll have a building named after him. So he'll have to, he'll have to hit it hard in the engineering. Let's get, let's get him to sponsor the podcast first. All right. We'll start, we right, we got to start big now. Okay. That's really big. That's why he's teasing him about. So if you're going to be an engineer, you better make some money so you can give back. <laughs> you recruited him out of high school, and it took him a few years to make it to Raleigh, but grad transfer Justin Oliver has been ranked in the top 10 all season at 149, and he looked really good in that major win up at UVA. 
Yeah, and he's been a great uh, asset to our program this past year. We did. We recruited him really hard out of high school. Didn't quite get him to come here then. And then after he graduated and had this last year left, uh, we're very fortunate and thankful that he chose to come here. And he's fit right in and has done some some big things already, some big wins. And still one that we've been working to get him back to 100%. Um, I think that's one of the biggest challenges when you have with kids when they're a fifth-year senior. You know, a lot of times these guys get banged up in their career, and it's really piecing it together, making sure they're healthy 100% at the right time, and that's what we're doing with him, and we're getting closer to closer to doing that. Justin got a major decision on his senior day against Pitt, and another senior had another exciting win. He was our featured guest on the podcast last week, but at 141 pounds, Jamel Morris is closing out his Wolfpack career in the starting lineup. He took over that spot in mid January. And going into the last two duels, he's a perfect six and zero. And we toss around the pack mentality hashtag a lot. But here's a guy five years in the program. He stayed focused, stayed the course, and he's a starter here now in his final season. Yeah, and that speaks to uh, Jamel's performance and, and work ethic, and you know, not giving up. Because a lot of times in a college room, you know, you never know when your opportunity is going to come. And he stuck stuck with a lot of uh, hard times, you know, as. His career went on here. He was in and out of our lineup a little bit um, and finally gets the call and has taken full advantage of his opportunity at 141 pounds. And he's really elevated our, our dual meet as far as the team goes, coming out here and being a guy that we can re- rely on heavily for a win. Your starter at 197, a former NCAA qualifier, Malik McDonald. He's a North Carolina product from Hope Mills, majoring in social work. Yeah, Malik's another one, you know, we recruited him out of high school and it was one you didn't know where his career was going to end up because it was a kid that was pretty pretty good coming out of high school and he's just hit the ground running since he's been here with his work ethic, his attitude. I think when you look at the success he's had, his attitude really has dictated that. He's a he's really about the team. He'll do anything you ask him to do and, you know, he's one of these guys that when you you look at the rise of our program. It's a guy like that that has contributed a lot in many different ways other than just wrestling. The self-dubbed Kentucky gambler, Sean Fowles, three-time NCAA qualifier, defending ACC champion at 125, majoring in electrical engineering. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing easy that comes you know, with being an engineer and wrestling at 125 pounds and training the way Sean has and you know, making 25 25- the last couple of years, uh, it's not an easy thing for him to do. And he's super disciplined and, you know, he's a, he's a team guy. You look at some of the stuff he's been doing for us this year, wrestling up at 33 with when Tariq wasn't a hundred percent. So, you know, he's improved tremendously from where he started. And that's just a reflection of his hard work and commitment. And he is probably one of the most disciplined people I've ever been around. And I'm looking forward to seeing this kid finish out in a high note and winning an NCAA title. Cause he's that good. Pat, it's always exciting when the Wolfpack and Tar Heels face off in any sport. So good luck to you and the guys this Friday night over in Chapel Hill. It would be great to see a lot of NC State fans make that short drive over to Carmichael Arena and support the Wolfpack. Yeah, we need as many uh, fans as we can get out there wearing red. I'm glad you got your red on today, Brian. It's nice of you to do. It's a red out in the office. Yes, I got it on too. Yeah, well, you haven't given me any red yet. I uh, guess I'm still earning my gear this yeah, year. we got to win a little more. I don't know what to say, but I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Pop-Ins podcast covering all things NC State Wrestling. Until next time, Wolfpack Wrestling fans, go Pack! The Pack Mentality Pop-Ins podcast is produced by the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to matttalkonline.com.